civilizations. Yet it intrigued us today. Civilizations like Atlantis. Now we know that Atlantis had great technology, that this was their way of development, and there have been many wonderful writings about this ancient, ancient civilization by people like Madame Blavatsky, whom Michael Sala brought up in his presentation. There's much information in Indian <coughs> history of the Rishi kings. Now the Rishi kings of ancient India were so developed in their consciousness that they were able, that these people were able to move matter, to influence matter at a great level. In fact, there are stories of these Rishi kings who would have armies come against their own kingdoms and they would, through their mind and concentration, be able to stop these armies entirely. Other civilizations like Lumeria and Lu. Now, in Hawaii, the ancient, the current Hawaiian people have written in their history and talked about the land of Lu, the continent of Lu, being now uh, a part of the Hawaiian Islands, or the Hawaiian Islands being a part of this a remnant of this ancient continent. And the things that we know about Lemuria is that they developed their civilization through, through consciousness, like Michael Sala talked in his presentation, not using technology to develop great wonders, but solely developing the mind and the heart to achieve great goals. Yet the thing with all of these civilizations is that they rose to great golden ages and then these civilizations fell. And these civilizations now are lost in the annals of time, practically lost in our memories. Today we are talking about an age of transformation. Even people in the workplace, conventional people, I'm hearing talking all the time about this idea of transformation, of reconnecting to spirit, of awakening something within. It is not, it is no longer enough in life to just have the material successes. People are searching for something more. Well, Back at the turn of the 20th century, Sri Aurobindo, uh, Aurobindo, pictured here with Mira Alfasa, they began doing their work. Now the story of Sri Aurobindo is that he began as a political activist. He was the man who was working to liberate India from the shackles of Great Britain. And so, during his work as an activist, he was in prison, and he decided to take up yoga at that time because he thought that the practice of yoga would help him to achieve greater potentials in his political career. But what happened instead is he became one of the greatest spiritual leaders and masters of consciousness through his work, left completely <coughs> behind the political path. Now, he would join forces with Mira Alfasa, who was a French woman known to be one of the great occultists of her time. She had very special gifts to attune to the different levels of reality, to interact, to telepathically communicate with beings at different levels. The two of them began their work together, and later they would become known as the double-pulled avatar. That